السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام شرف الأنبياء ومرسلين نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم dear brothers and sisters welcome back to inspired by Islam ما شاء الله it's amazing to be front of you guys and we have a special guest for you today from New Zealand and without any delay let me introduce my friend Zakaria welcome to our show hi how are you You're right I'm alright nice to see you sir how you been oh, I'm very good yeah yeah, yeah. New Zealand is really, really far, isn't it? It's a long way away, yeah. No, <laughs> long way. It gets quite boring on the way over, yeah. Really? How long does it take you to come all the way? Um, 12 hours to LA or Singapore, depending on which way you go, and then another 11 hours, so it almost comes to, I think it's 23 hours. It's a beautiful all. country, though. Yeah? It is amazing, yeah. I amazing. Love it. Yeah. Tell me about yourself. Uh, uh, what do you do? Um, well, at the moment, obviously, I'm in uh, England, but... When I was back home, I, um, I grew up in a place called Dunedin. Uh, it's down south, so it's slightly, slightly colder than the northern regions. Um, I am first year out of school, so uh, the start of this year, or oh, started last year, sorry, 2018, uh, I worked as a labourer, um, earning some money uh, to come over to England and have an experience over here. Yeah, tell me about the experience you were actually dreaming about. What were you trying to achieve? Oh, so, the goal sort of was to um, come over here and play for a, a really world-class hockey team, uh, field hockey. So I, I, I managed to play a few games for the, for the prim, Premier side in Rochester, um, Holcomb Hockey Club. They've been such, a, such an amazing side. I'm really happy with how I've been going. Um, but the, the community around the hockey club is just so much, so much fun, you know. Like yeah, I mean, New Zealand is known for the rugby, isn't it? The, the, it's a <laughs> rugby, rugby nation, yeah. isn't it? Um, right, how did you get into rugby. hockey? Uh, hockey, so um, I got there? into it just because my, my parents uh, used to play way, way back, way back. Um, my mum plays in a Masters team now. but um, Oh, um, she's a hockey player, isn't Yeah, it? yeah, she still, she still runs around a wee bit. Where um, does she get the time after I has, you know, she's a doctor and she's, got, you know, she's busy herself, mm. then, then mm. if she finds the time for... Oh, it's just it's some more of a weekend sort of ladies... Uh, Team, you know, it's quite a social sort of. It's not very professional, um, but the girls they, they have a lot of fun. You know, they, they run around do what they can. So do you think she influenced you into the rugby? Of course, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I remember watching her play, um, tossing a well, uh, hitting a hockey ball against a, a wall while she's playing on the on the field. Yeah. Is that because I've seen your younger brother also play, and your sister also plays hockey as well, don't she? Um, or rugby, yeah, my younger my youngest uh, br brother plays. Yeah. My so how many brothers and sisters do you have? I have an older sister, uh, Jess. She's at university. Uh, younger sister and brother. My sister is second last year at high school. Um, she's she's into her her rugby actually, um, and then my younger brother, who's a year eleven, so third last year at high school, plays a lot of hockey. Amazing, amazing. Mm. So, what what was your dream? I mean, what's your dream to you want to become a hockey player internationally, or just just you want to try something? Well, I inspire to sort of um, hit the hit the ceiling of my my athletic career. You know, I want to see how far I can go. Obviously, if it means playing for the Black Sticks, playing for New Zealand, that'd be that'd be a huge, huge effort for me. I'd love to do that. But if if it means that I don't get that far, I'm still still having so much fun. I'm staying healthy while playing. So. Enjoying it, yeah. You know, it's really amazing to see. Uh, I've known you for a while, and uh, it's mm. amazing to see how you uh, adopt yourself in UK. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know how you settle down and doing all your mm. trainings and your daily things, and also you've been going out, also holidaying in, in, in the middle is where you go yeah, to France, you yeah, go to really this lucky, place, you yeah. go to Holland, and on other places you've been mm. to. And did you think that made you into a? I want to say a man, but I'm saying, did you, do you think it made you a mature? The experience. Oh, I mean. Uh, London has always been been there for me. You know, I've I've always come over uh, from a young age to see my family over here, see my mum's side, you know, my granddad, and um, so I've I've always known sort of not not necessarily the city, but the area, Greenwich. Um, really enjoyed it there. Uh, but to come over here and um, you know be here for as long as I have been, uh, it's just been such a good experience. I feel like. I feel like I have grown up quite a bit. You know, my mum came over for work and saw me and said that I've turned into such a a um, serious sort of figure now. I used to be quite a quite a fun boy, but now I've now I've completely switched. Um, yeah, a lot of our young people are watching you, and um, I'm, I'm yeah. definitely sure they are uh, seeing you as a very mature young man. You know, he, from New Zealand, you came here and trying to build yourself up, and and he has mm. he has made you into something special, mm. honestly. 
But what was the strength behind? I mean, I mean, you keep mentioning your mom a few times. You mentioned. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, I wouldn't say your mom is boy, but I'm saying <laughs> don't forget <laughs> your daddy's boy. Yeah. What kind of strength does she? What does she do to make you feel um, you're at home even here? Yeah. So um, I've got my uncles over here, and they're obviously her her brothers, um, and they they look after me. Um, but mum's always checking in, you know, seeing that I'm all right, <laughs> making sure that. Um, my uncles are looking after me, not not just you know giving me a phone call every now and again, but um, you know seeing my grandpa um, in his old age is is really really encouraging to um, hang out with him more, see him more. Brilliant. Yeah. I remember first time. Um, I don't know if you've been to to um, a Muslim uh, mosque before. The way yeah, we yeah. prayers. I think about a few years ago, 2014 mm, uh, in mm. Ramadan, yeah, well, and you yeah, came yeah. with your mum to our mosque. Yeah, yeah. Um, Tell me first, what was your expectation? Do you think you're going to do something? Oh my God, where am I going? What oh. were you actually doing before you went? Well, I mean, I, I came over um, really excited to be in London again, you know, see my parents, uh, my, my, grand, my grandfather again. But um, when my mum said oh, we're going to a mosque tonight, I, I didn't know what to expect, you know. I'd, I'd, I didn't really have too what much. What was it going in your head? Is it, did you think the mosque inside is more like uh, chairs, tables, and uh, dark? Um, Mm. You know, the, the setting is different, isn't it? Like it was, the church and, and the yeah, other places. Yeah, yeah. It was a long time ago. I was just expecting a church, to be honest. Um, I didn't understand the concept Ramadan, so okay. it, was, it was quite, quite amazing to see so many people uh, in such a big area. And we actually, well, we didn't eat with with um, Muslim people, but we ate at the same time. Quite late at night, I remember it being. I was starving. Yeah, I think it was uh, around <laughs> half nine or something like half that. Half nine, it? yeah. I, I think it was a few years I ago, about half nine. Yeah. yeah. Can you imagine? Um, from four o'clock in the morning till nine o'clock. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, we feel um, we're humbled to do that. We're honoured mm. to be uh, doing this for uh, for the Creator. I think we're thanking Him for everything He has given us. So it's yeah, a way of yeah. thanking Him. Also, we feel the feelings of the um, you know people don't have food, enough food around the world. We know, and then you feel for them, and you also save up. This is the month where we Muslims actually save up and give charities. So this is this month, especially in the UK, we raise more than 100 million pounds for it's charities. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the month we say a month of a charity, month of giving, month yeah. of this. Um, so you didn't have the name, name Ramadan before that day? No, no, I, I didn't know what it was. Wow, no. interesting. <laughs> um, because as a Muslim, we think, oh, then everyone knows everything, but it's oh, not, course, that's not yeah. the case. Yeah. It's normal. Uh, I don't know not, nothing about other faiths, well, a lot of the things I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Um, how was it? Okay, so you went to the mosque. How was it for you? What did you see? Um, I remember. What was brought through your head? Where is the woman? Where is the ladies? Or where is the? You know, I'm sure <laughs> you went through your head like that. It was. It was such <laughs> a such. Um, how old were you then? How old were you then that time? I was 14 or 15. 14. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. but you're still young. <laughs> so really young. Yeah. <laughs> um, just the experience was really, really, really cool to be there. You know, everyone was so selfless, so um, caring. You know, they were making sure that. We, we had piles of food on our plate before anyone else, you know, we were about to start tucking in and, you know, it was, it was really, really nice um, environment to be around. Have you been to any other mosque? Um, no, I'd, I think I've just been to the one uh, here. Okay, in, okay. In London, yeah, we yeah. the mosque. Um, in, especially in UK now, we see, um, after 7-7 um, seven, seven and all those uh, suicide bombs and all of those mm, things mm. happening, uh, in the name of Islam, or some Muslims are doing it. Um, we call them then a Muslim because you can't kill yourself. In Islam, no, you're not allowed not. to harm yeah. anybody. Mm. You're not allowed to harm anyone at all. Mm. Um, they're doing this, so it's it's we're having a division, almost like a, you know, increase of um, hate crime, mm. uh, racism, Islamophobia is is on rise. It's horrible. And yeah. after thinking about Brexit thing, how came in again? And they're still blaming the the foreigners and all that stuff. So it's yeah. so I think uh, stuff like this that we invite you to our place or you invite me to your place that opens the door for friendship. Uh, of course, yeah. And you get to know what real picture is. Mm. You know, mm. so that's that's why we do this very often. We do every month to open the door for most people to come in yeah. and see what we do. And let's talk to us. Tell us something you want to know. Ask us directly instead of going to the media and looking at those headlines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, no, yeah. it's never, never been a helpful. Mm. Um, in New Zealand, is there any any big Muslim community there? Or um, I understand uh, up in the north, North Island, where there are slightly larger cities, it's, it's much, much greater than than the city I come from. Um, 
you know, going around the city up there, you can see see the sort of the communities so much, so much more um, uh, uh, people around. You know, so many more different different. Um, oh, what's the word? Sorry. Did uh, you have, you have you spoke to them? Have you spoke to them? Uh, no, no, I don't spend too much time. I'm sure it's a very small phone. community. That's why maybe uh, they're not. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, I haven't been there, but um, I had to say it's a beautiful place. I mean, mm. it, it's it's amazing. Um, I was going to ask you. I know um, you you've been here for a while now. Yeah. Here it, it's a very mixed uh, communities. Mm. You know, very yeah, multicultural yeah. stuff going on. How do you see it? Is it positive? Do you see it's a good thing, or do you think it's a backward? Oh, it's really good to see um, the sort of the views uh, that other people have. You know, it's it's always been quite cool to walk around and see so many cultures, so many different beliefs going on around you. And until now, I haven't really understood it. Um, you know, coming over such a young age now, now, now I'm a little bit older. I understand a, few, a little bit more. I hope so. <laughs> so um, you know, I get to I get to sort of dive into the dive into the thought process that the cultures have around me yeah because cool. i remember when i was talking to your mum, she said to me she's got she had a muslim friends oh yeah she yeah, works yeah. with the muslim d doctors and mm. all that stuff she's mm. i think she also had a gcse in religious study herself yeah. so she knows yeah. quite a lot about our uh, faith as well so that's mm. very interesting um as a young man i want to understand uh, where other young people st you know where they stand Do yeah. you ever, does it ever cross your mind that um, faith is um, it's important. Faith. Faith, yeah. Believing um, in something oh, faith, is sorry. important. Um, no, nah, not. I feel like you. You always. Um, you know, you, you're always in control of it. Um, you sort of. It's up to you. Uh, you know, you can't really go out and ask questions of other people because it's always up to you, and you should. You should know what to do, really. You know, if you don't, it'll it'll happen if you do the right thing, sort of thing. But does it ever cross your mind that um, I didn't create myself? Mm. I was created, <laughs> and who done it? It's does it ever cross your mind? I mean, as a young person? Um, no, not not particularly. Okay. No, it's, it's sort of just um, when I dive into that sort of thought process, I just blows my mind really I just stop thinking about it because I, I think can't. the question is too big is that yeah I mean, it's exactly, too, exactly you can't yeah. go anywhere with, with the, with mm, the thing mm. what if they okay what if, if it's uh, what if what if we are right I mean I'm, I'm a, I, I represent the faith myself what yeah. if you're saying the faith is the uh, salvation well, uh, I think and, and uh, not thinking about it's not a salvation what, what what if I'm right would that I think be you're very intelligent then. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying <laughs> yeah yeah no, I can't yeah. I can't show you God but I'm just yeah. saying mm. uh, um, if I'm saying that there is, you have to have a faith mm. for salvation. Yeah. And if you don't have faith, you end up uh, uh, somewhere. Um, does it bother you, that, that question? Does it bother you? I think, well, obviously I'm still living without the answer. So, I mean, it's not going to hurt me to really figure it out. It would be, it'd be amazing to, um, to know where we came from, um, how we evolved, you know, the, all the scientific facts. They don't quite line up you know obviously yeah scientific fact we normally say <laughs> they don't say why we created mm. they would say how we how how yeah. but mm. it doesn't know the why because if if i create if i made this one i would know why i made it yeah yeah but mm. science will can say only say how it made he can't say you why so we as a human being we are created we know we're created because i didn't create myself um so it didn't come from nothing. Someone had to create. Of you. course, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're saying that creator is the owner of everything, mm. and then we say he's one because if he's two, it doesn't work. He's saying he's one as well. He's always said I'm one. Yeah, I'm uncreated. Yeah. He can't create me. So when something created, say I create this one, I don't have to be within. I know how it works. I'm outside. So God, you, God created the universe. He's outside the universe. But with his knowledge and everything, he can be anywhere with mm. his knowledge. He doesn't have to be in present there. He would he yeah, know what's going yeah. on. And he made this. It's a plan. It's a game. Yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah, a test yeah. for us. Yeah. That's what we believe. So he created and he's outside the creation. And he's nothing like his creation. I, if I create this one, I don't have to be like iPad. Mm. If I'm like an iPad, what's the difference between me and the iPad? I create another one. So we say, that's why we say God is nothing like his creation. Nothing. So if you, n if you name anything like, oh, this man is godly or this man is this, he can't be because 
He's a man. He's a creation. He's been mm. created. He's not Do better you? than anyone else, sort of thing. Yeah, he's, he's created. Mm. That's yeah. it. He's, maybe he's a better man, fine, but he can't be God because he's created. Mm. God can't be created. If someone creates God, that means whoever is the... He's he'll the be God. more yeah, powerful. Yeah, yeah, Do you yeah, get course, me? It doesn't course. work like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know I'm asking you religious questions again. <laughs> 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 I wanted to know because my young, my kids are growing up in this country. Yeah. Um, so I'm sure they, they have the similar thinking. They probably, you know, like when you, when you go to church you're, when you're young. Have you been to church yourself? Uh, when you were young, I've been through school. You sort of, you do sort of um, dive into. I've been to a religious primary school when I was young, um, and we did we did do prayers every sun, uh, Sunday. Uh, we were encouraged to, but it wasn't it wasn't compulsory, obviously. Um, but from a young age, I've sort of been, you know, surrounded by um, religious people. Yeah. Do you think uh, that the religion is coming more? Um or it's more flourishing now than when you were a few years ago? Like um, people are openly talking about it or people are in, more... In New Zealand or here? Both places. What do you think? In New Zealand, it's quite a... It's quite a... Um, you know, there aren't too many cultures running around. There aren't... It's not full of full of life like it is here sort of thing. Uh, it's, it's very one-based, one-dimensional sort of... Um, you know, there's, there's God sort of thing and then there's... Ramadan and there's heaps of heaps of different different cultures but um, it's just it's just uh, when you say different what does it mean I mean is it like they're not bothered about anything they're just living the life yeah yeah exactly yeah yeah okay another yeah, question for you then. yeah you go on does it uh, do you think we just say um, everything has a purpose right mm. everything has a purpose mm. yeah you're wearing a shirt it's got a purpose to cover you mm. Your hair has a purpose because he also covers your hair and all that stuff. Um, what is it that, as a human being, our purpose? Do you think we have a pur we are purposeless or what? What do you think? I think we do have a purpose. Yeah. To, um, so how would we know? How would we know about that purpose? Who would know that purpose perfectly? Is it the maker or the person who is made? Creation. Who would um, know the most perfectly? I think. I think uh, having a purpose is really, really important. Um, so I think, I think everyone has a different purpose. I don't think we all have the same but purpose. My question was, who would know the, the, the clear one? The one who made it? Because he made it, he knows the purpose. Mm. So I've, I, this is a cup. Mm. I made this cup. Does the cup know the purpose why he made or I know the purpose? Who would know? The maker or the... They have to be the maker, I think. Have to be the maker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's an obvious question. I know mm. it's, it's, it's not an easy, easy answer to. Um, so he would know why he made you and he would know what he wants from you. Mm. Yeah. So if I, if I was, if I'm the, um, if I try to make my own purpose, mm. instead of knowing what my purpose by the creator, it's always going to conflict. It is, yeah, yeah. yeah. It would always conflict. Okay, let's move away from religion. We talked about religion a lot. What do you think about Brexit? Brexit? Yeah, what do you think? I think um, it's, I think it's this a bit no of a shame. There's no wrong and right. I don't know. I'm, I, I think we're all going to have different views. I think it's a bit of a shame, to be honest. I think, um, you know, when it, when it first came out and the, before the vote, I think everyone was just, um, there was no knowledge involved. It was sort of this or that, you know. It was, people were... Um, tricked into thinking and assuming they, things yeah mostly, exactly to be yeah, honest. Yeah. Um, but when it first started obviously I wasn't in the country um, so I coming from New Zealand we're quite far away so we didn't we didn't really dive into it too much you know we heard the vote and well they've managed to leave sort of thing um, but sort of going through it today watching the headlines and the news it's it's taken back, you know. It's like do you think it's going to happen? What do you, what's your gut's feeling? Do you think it's going to happen? Oh, it's got to happen, isn't it? I think it has to happen because, yeah. you know, like, we've done it mm. yeah. and go ahead. But if they have a second referendum, if they have a second one, there's a big tunnel oh, to I go through. I don't know if they can, they might, do that, can man. they? It depends. The people it are depends, pushing for really, that line. Really? Okay. I think so. If, if the people are pushing in that line, mm. they're not sure anymore. People are confused now. Yeah, and yeah. they'll say, oh, leave really it. I don't know, I'm not sure, I think, but I, I think, think it'll be a shame. People will lose trust in the politics because we voted it, you change yeah. it. I mean, you can keep on changing. There's no trust mm. in the po politics anymore. Mm. Well, I mean, I think um, everyone was just so so confused about it. You know, the older generation sort of voting to leave and then the younger generation voting to stay. 
um, I think it was very, very uh, two-faced sort of, sort of sides of the story. You know, you get you get one side and then you're just hooked. You don't you don't look at the other side. You don't you don't take into uh, account you know the the pros and the cons sort of thing. You just care about your own sort of life. Yeah. Um, and how it affects you, not how it affects the country sort of thing. You know. Okay, so after you're going back to New Zealand, mm, yeah. what's your plan? Uh, well, I've set up a, um, a course at university um, to go back, back into. Uh, hopefully, hopefully that takes me away, but if, if it doesn't, you know, it is what it is. And um, just, It's a bit, of a bit of a test, to be honest, if I, if I enjoy that, that career or not. Um, but if I don't, then I'll just I'll find myself uh, playing more and more hockey as, as it gets on and hoping to you know, get as high as I can in my, my career. So what's the future like? So you, you, of course, I'm sure you're going to do well because you've done well here. Honestly. You've done <laughs> yeah. well here. Uh, um, because you've got, you've got nobody, your family's not around here and you're doing mm. that far. It's mm. not easy, honestly. Yeah, it's um, difficult. I'm sure you, you're al almost homesick in the beginning, I'm sure. Yeah, it's yeah, a normal yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, but you know lots of people in, 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 in that industry, I mean, especially in the hockey mm. industry, you know lots of people, uh, people are well, playing for... Yeah, coming over here, it's just, I know so, so many more styles of hockey, so many more ways of doing, you know, the same, same thing. Uh, and it's definitely uh, given me much more knowledge uh, to the game. You know, I, I completely understand it before, before I thought I did, but coming over here, you know, it's just like, it opens up another door. Is there good money in that field though? Uh, not so much in New Zealand, unfortunately. Um, over here in Europe, big big bucks over here, but in New Zealand, it's it's, it's quite quite weak. Uh, yeah. Okay. Second time around, you've been to. Um, I invited you for a dinner in the mm. mosque again. Yeah, 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 yeah. A while ago. I thought it'd be interesting because there, I think we had about, about four to five hundred people turned up. Mm. Yeah, it was big, big number yeah. of people yeah. and uh, people from people from different faith, different background, mm. and people have with no faith, and we were, they were all sharing food and we're just talking about all cultures, not just one culture. And mm. We talked about our neighbours, especially that was the target. Talk it about was, the yeah, neighbours. Yeah, yeah. How was it for you that dinner? It was it was so warm to walk into that um, that food hall. You know, we had speakers speaking, and it was it was a fun environment as well. You know, so many people that uh, basically pull out your chair, um, you know, for you, and you'd sit down. Oh, and you feel nice. so privileged to be there. You know, you felt felt really really lucky to be uh, included in their sort of their side their side of the world. Or you know, it was, it was just it was really nice nice um, environment. Yeah. Um. It wasn't the mosque itself, but that's the centre just side by. That's why it was already open and, and a lot of people came into yeah, it. And it was yeah, a mix yeah. as well. A lot of women were there, the mm. men were there, and yeah, the children were there yeah. too. Families were there. And um, what did you pick up from there? That if we all work together, I'm talking about all the faiths and non faiths together, yeah, well would that be a better for the future? Or what do you think? I think um, you know, obviously we need to... Um, we need to build up a, a level of uh, acceptance sort of thing. I feel like everyone's sort of on the on the same sort of page but you know no one's really really inviting people into into like inviting you guys into our into our sort of culture you know it's it's always been a bit of a bit of a rough patch I'm not sure why but you know you guys inviting us into into your environment it's just really really um Really uh, nice of you, you know. It's no, I've, I've, I've been, we've been invited to so many places as well. As yeah. We've been to a lot of churches oh, myself okay, and good. temples yeah, yeah, and yeah. other places yeah. and, and synagogue. Yes, we, did, we do get invitation, especially in London. Mm. We get a lot of cross invitation, mashallah, mm. that's good. And that makes a very healthy life, especially in London. You, you can see that model is working. It's really nice because yeah. you, you, it's good to know each other. And we all have a similar uh, understanding, to be honest, of life. We all human beings. We all have a similar life. We want to have love, peace. You know, mm. let's move on in mm. our life and be successful. Um, we don't have much time. Um, what would you be? What would be your advice to our young viewers who are trying to work hard and making it a, into a better shape their life? What would you? What is uh, your uh, um, last word would be? I mean, looking back on uh, my younger sort of years, um, I've always been pushed by my my parents to work. Work hard, you know. We lived on a farm in New Zealand. Well, we we live on a farm in New Zealand, and um, always being, uh, you know, really, really pushed to go out there and, and do all the jobs that, that you necessarily just don't want to do. And some other kids just wouldn't wouldn't do it, you know. They just say no, sort of thing. But I've always been, um, 
not forced. It was more. It was. It was in the end by um, by myself. I went out there and did, did the jobs without being. But you asked appreciate me. him though, isn't he? Made I, you I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's seriously made me into a to a solid thing. You know, I can. I've got the work ethic now, um, which is really, really helpful. You know, if you work work your ass off, then you'll get there. You know, no matter what. <laughs> and, um, and well, thanks for that. the time today, and right. um, I'm honoured and glad you came. Yeah, and um, and no, sharing your you experience and everything. Yeah. So God bless and look, look up to your uh, bright future soon. Thank you, dear brothers and sisters. Um, we are about to finish now, and I'm sure you've uh, understood the young man. He's been through an amazing journey, and he le he showed how much hard you know work he put into it, and that's the only way you get success. So. Um, we should appreciate and we also should try hard as well. So may Allah bless and I'll see you next time. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.